All right, guys, welcome to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Uh, we're going to do a quick little update here. Uh, we are covering Hurricane Dorian right now. And there are a few things that we want to talk about as far as what's going on with this storm right now. Uh, first, I'd like to give off the current stats. As of 2 o'clock, the National Hurricane Center has upgraded the, well, actually has updated us on the current track and the uh, strength of the storm. The pressure is staying at 911 millibars, so no change from the previous advisory. The sustained winds are 185 miles per hour with gusts at 200 miles per hour or higher. Um, and it's moving west at seven miles per hour. Now, they're thinking that this storm is going to take its northerly track somewhere uh, overnight uh, tonight into Monday and this storm will then begin to curve away from Florida but guys uh, I've been following this all day today and you know when you hear channels like the weather channel I know this is like their Daytona 500 their Super Bowl when they get storms like this to cover but I don't think the one thing that I, I don't think these guys do would be throwing terms around that's irresponsible to scare anybody or anything like that. This is how serious this storm is. The Weather Channel is calling this the strongest storm to ever that this planet ever, has ever seen. Uh, but then I hear other reports that this is in the top six of Atlantic uh, hurricanes. And as far as hitting the Bahamas, this is definitely the strongest that anyone has ever seen. So a lot of maybe exaggeration possible because of how strong this storm is and folks 200 miles an hour gust that's that's insane uh mari posted something on grand solar minimum um on the facebook page uh giving us the stats on what these winds feel like inside this eye wall and it's basically like an ef3 tornado on the ground for a couple of hours or longer so this storm is i keep hearing the words unprecedented uncharted waters and this is coming from uh, folks on the Weather Channel, guys. And they are not messing around with warning these people who are possibly in the way of the storm. And right now, again, this is still a Category 5 with winds of 185 miles per hour. Uh, we are also uh, noticing that the pressure is staying at 911 millibars with some experts are expecting the pressure to drop even more. So right now it is making its first uh, landfall here in the Bahamas. And we watch this storm very closely as the, the, the hurricane wind force uh, will begin to affect the coast of Florida within several hours. So, and hoping for this northerly turn. Now, I also want to mention that we are in a G2 geomagnetic storm for the second day in a row. Uh, we were in one for most of the day yesterday, and then KP indices fell to about four. And then earlier this morning, we had KP indices rising into the five, and now finally they are sitting at a KP of six, which makes it another G2 geomagnetic storm. On top of that, we have solar winds that are bringing highly charged particles into our atmosphere at the rate of 705.3 uh, kilometers per uh, kilometer per second, sorry. So converting that into miles per hour is around a million miles per hour that this solar wind is uh, bombarding our Earth's magnetic field. Now, did have a conversation about this uh, with Lee Wheelbarger uh, and his knowledge with particles and his plasma expertise and all that other stuff that he does have good info on. Um, he mentioned this to me yesterday where the KP indices were up yesterday. It's feeding the storm. It's making it grow. And then it settled down. And then he also told me that we would see another shot of this uh, space weather today, not past today, however. So today would be the last day of these geomagnetic storms. So they happened at about a day earlier they were forecasted for the 1st and the 2nd. Instead, we got them on the 31st and now today the 1st. Uh, but I have to agree with uh, Wheelbarger on this as well, that these highly charged particles that are being hurled at our planet right now, uh, that are in our atmosphere, those particles have arrived. And with KP indices as high as they are, 
solar wind as fast as it is our atmosphere is getting lit up right now and also if you go to spaceweather.com you can check out the tci uh temperature right now which is up it was at 3.05 it's now at 3.44 and every time i talk about uh, tci temperatures going up i always have a correlation with that and that is because we've seen increased solar wind speeds in the 500s and the 400s it would go up slight uh, this is quite an increase in our upper atmosphere temperatures but fear not we are still well within the cold range of these temperatures it's just when you get the effects from highly charged particles hitting your planet atmosphere this fast this much uh, that is the reaction you're getting so the reason why i mentioned the space weather aspect of this is because I have to bring up what happened in September of 2017. Now, a lot of you will remember the, the solar storms that we had in September of 2017. And a lot of you also will remember the hurricanes that we had that happened in September of 2017. Um, I want to first bring up, we had Hurricane Irma that formed uh, around August 30th. This was also a Cat 5 by September 4th. The winds were 185. Uh, on September 6th, Irma passed over parts of the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, skirted the northern parts of Puerto Rico. Now, I want to point out that the strongest point of this storm was around September 6, maximum sustained winds of 185 uh, miles per hour. Um, this is relevant in many ways, folks. And I'll tell you why here just in a second. Let's check out what our space weather was doing that day as well. Oh yeah, there is a correlation. We experienced solar activity CMEs, solar storms from the period of September 4th through September, I'm sorry, between September 6th and September 10th was when we had CMEs, uh, we had X flare uh, class, um, X class flares from the sun, CMEs, and of course, geomagnetic activity. And we had Irma, and we also had Maria in the same month during the same period of solar weather that we had uh, during this period of time as well. Where am I going with this? So many events happened in the month of September. It was such a freak month. Uh, 2017, we were starting to see the de decline in solar activity and then all of a sudden late August and September, boom. We had this, this particle, energetic particle event that took place that was captured on uh, Stereo's instruments. It was uh, September 9th, and it was a very apparent energetic particle event uh, with X-class flares. I think we had up to four of them in the beginning of September. So, and then on top of that, with geomagnetic storms that we had as well, Plus, we had a pretty big sunspot, which dropped the TSI, and a lot of the people are correlating the reason why the TSI fell during that sunspot was that that sunspot was that big where that amount of darkness actually dropped the total solar irradiance as well. So, and it dropped it down to 1659 uh, point something or rather, but I know it was below the 1360 threshold. So, when you look back in time, just in September of 2017, and we had the flares, we had the CMEs, we had the particle event, and of course, geomagnetic storms as well. And then you come over here to this year, 2019, and we've had two days of G2, which are not very strong at all, folks. I'm not sitting here making a big deal about the G2 storms. Back-to-back -back days, what it's doing is loading up the atmosphere with highly charged particles, which I believe are helping fuel the strength of this storm right now and the size of it as we're looking at it on this current satellite data. Folks, you have to think about cloud nucleation. 
during storms like this when you see them expanding and you're thinking to yourself, what could cause a storm to continue to expand to the size that it is right now? And it's nothing more than what the sun is doing to our climate right now. And the biggest thing I want to drive home is, is that there is a correlation between the sun and our climate here on earth. Man is not causing this. This is not some conspiracy manipulated weather system that's coming across the ocean here. This is 100% correlation with what our sun and its effect to our climate. The activity that happens on the sun correlates with these events. And that's the bottom line. So again, we are looking at a Cat 5 Hurricane Dorian that is making its way across the Bahamas as we speak. 200 mile an hour gusts. On top of that, we're waiting for the track update. Right now, the track continues to move a little bit further west as well. And um, in the beginning, we started to see this easterly track that was pulling this away from the coast. And that made a lot of people breathe a little easier. But here, in the last five updates, we are starting to see a consistent that this storm could skirt the eastern part of Florida when it's all said and done. And that's not until Tuesday. And even at Tuesday, this storm is still expected to make a landfall as a Cat 4. Now, I also want to point out to everyone as well, the last time that we had a hurricane on Labor Day weekend that had winds that exceeded 165 miles per hour was in 1935. And if you go back, uh, you can go look at the uh, sunspot chart on thegrandsolarminimum.com. David Birch was kind enough to allow us to display his work. And you will see between 1820, I'm, no, I'm sorry, 1920, well, hold on a second before I make that statement. The point I was trying to make, however, is that the last time that we saw a storm of this strength on a Labor Day weekend was during a period of lower solar activity first and foremost. And to me, it's important to make sure that folks know this is not a coincidence. Let's go back in time. Okay, so between, this is the correct information I wanted to make sure I had right, folks. So between solar cycle 16 and 17 was 1935. And the minimum was 1937 for solar cycle 17. So just two years prior to the minimum, as it's descending into the minimum, just like we are right now, we had this monster hurricane in 1935. So again, when we look at the charts of all these really strong hurricanes over the past several years, and you see the one from 35 that stands out, that was also during a solar minimum period. Now, I can tell you right now, the global warming crowd is going to tell everyone when we look at this hurricane graph and we'll bring it up on monday's show but everyone's going to be screaming and shouting about how look at the last you know 2017 2018 2019 look at all these strong category four storms it's got to be global warming and the reason why i brought up the space weather is because these storms that have been really strong in the last three years are all coincidental that they've happening during a, a minimum period that right now we are seeing some very low solar activity from our sun, which weakens the magnetic field on earth and allows more highly charged particles to bombard our atmosphere. So guys, this is not a coincidence. This has nothing to do with CO2. This has nothing to do with the earth warming. It just so happens once again in September, we're experiencing a little bit of uptick in uh, solar activity, and it is contributing to the strength of this storm here, Hurricane Dorian. It is no coincidence. So again, a little bit of a one-on-one. I wanted to bring everything up here, folks, about why we're seeing and why I believe and why others like Lee believes as well, Mari too, that this storm is basically being fed by our space weather at this point. There's no other explanation. We, 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 you know, we've talked about what happened in September of 2017. We had Irma and Maria. We were having some extreme 
solar weather, and we got a lot of rain from both of those storms. So we will be back later on for another live update, probably after 5 o'clock when the National Hurricane Center gives its uh, next update on this uh, deadly hurricane. Uh, Mari is going to join me later as well, and we're going to have a little discussion because, honestly, every time we look across the social media platforms, we are seeing over and over again uh, some unbelievable footage. And folks, let's, let's be clear about this. This storm is not the storm you want to stand out on your back porch and film. Anybody that is watching this video that lives in the east coast of Florida, do not attempt any kind of videography or any pictures. It is not worth risking your life. Even at a category four, this storm is still going to be dangerous. The size of the storm is bringing unprecedented storm surge right now as we speak to the Bahamas. And their words, not mine. The amount of storm surge that's happening right now in the Bahamas, quote unquote, is unimaginable. So folks, do not take any chances with this storm. If the track at five o'clock shows us this thing is gonna to continue to move to the west, uh, it's, it's time to start making preparations to either get out or get your final prep plans done because this storm will be on the doorstep of Florida if the track continues the way it is sometime early on Tuesday. All right, guys, we'll be back just in a little while, uh, probably around five, maybe before that, but definitely after five for the next update on Hurricane Dorian here on the Grand Solar Minimum News Channel.